Uh, the S&P 500 down about a tenth of 1%. Oil and all was said and done on the week. Yahoo Finance's Miles Udlin and Josh Schaefer are joining us now with their top takeaways of the trading week. Guys, who wants to start? Miles, you want well, to start? Well, I'll piggyback off what you guys were just talking yeah. about because um, I, I think today was sort of a reversal of what, what worked in 2024. We mentioned the chip names that were down. Marvell really catalyzing that move, you know, a smaller name kind of in that space. Um, but you kind of went through the tape as well. Apple was higher. It's been very popular to hate that stock yeah. so far this year. And I think what's interesting <clears throat> on a weekly basis, looking at the Magnificent Seven trade, NVIDIA was the only one that was doing any work. And I know that there's a little bit of concern, and Josh, we were talking about this before, yeah. about, you know, is this too constant? I mean, it's not new, right? Is it too concentrated? What's the next move? Where are we going to go? Um, but I think seeing names like Microsoft, Apple down a couple percent over the last week, Tesla down double digit percentages over the last week, um, Meta, Google not really doing anything. And, you know, Meta has really been, because NVIDIA is like its own story, Meta to me has been the most impressive member of the MAG7. And to see those names cool off this week was interesting to see. But then you take a look at the broad index, right? And the S&P 500 is basically flat. So to me, then the other part of that, Miles, that was kind of a broad takeaway from the week was, well, what held us up? Because when you look at some of those stocks struggling, you could argue NVIDIA for the week maybe held it up. But also we started to see a little bit of the broadening of the rally, right? We were talking about this yesterday, Julie and Josh, with the equal weighted S&P 500 hitting its first 52-week high uh, in about two years. And then you look at just the market action today. So we had the sell-off broadly, right? And you saw tech lead that. The Russell 2000 held up relatively well. I think it might have ended up finishing slightly positive. The S&P 500 equal weight also outperformed today outperform the index, I should say. And that's what's been happening over the last month. So it's been interesting just to start to see maybe a little bit of rotation into some of the other names outside of tech. You want to guess what the best performing group on the week was? Anybody want to guess? In the S&P? If you haven't looked at my screen. Uh, I think, I'm, I will guess that it was regional banks. No? It was a regional bank. I got nothing. <laughs> Financial. Utility. Utilities. 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 Okay, well, I was going to say, fixed income had a good week. Fixed income, <laughs> yeah, fixed so income it's had basically a good week. Exactly. So yeah. we saw, we saw yeah. about a 10 basis point drop in the 10-year yield. And yes, we tend to see things like utilities and real estate, which was another outperformer in the week, go up when yeah. that happens. So that seemed to be what was happening as we still have people kind of people decreasing even more their bets that the Fed is going to cut a lot of this. I just realized I didn't guess an S&P sector, so that's embarrassing. Well, regional banks, <laughs> regional banks it's is even a sub-sector. No, 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 yeah, financials, right. financials were higher on the well, week. I'll I was, give you that. I, well, I mean, it's, I was looking at, you know, I had, I had a regional bank take here. Uh, <laughs> all, well, no, off of New York Community Bank. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's at this moment, and, you know, Jared Blicker's been talking about this, financials have been a stealth outperformer over the mm -hmm. stealth, Industrials, financials have really been where a lot of that action has been in the context of a broadening market rally. And you can look to the Russell for some of that. You can look to the equal weighted S&P for some of that. And I think you could even just look as simple as, well, when Meta stops going up, what else is there? And the market being flat on that kind of action shows you there's a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Well, and the other thing we were thinking about, too, when we, My, Miles and I came up with three broad takeaways, guys. We put a lot yeah. of effort into our broad how far, takeaways. How far along are we in? Is this, are we on three? Or? Well, we went, so it's interesting, we went we one, started. Just we, tried, we went one, three, we and now I want to get to three. two. Yeah, we went one to so three. So we got to get to two. The macro hot take's cool. <laughs> but yeah. the interesting part of the week, when you think about coming into this, one of the things we were sort of, I guess, the risk to the market this week, the risk to the rally, right, was for one, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell is going to talk for about six hours. That's always going to make markets nervous. What's you going to say about mm -hmm. rates and it seemed like we largely survived that with kind of the same we, we leave the same way we entered right we still think maybe three to four cuts this year cuts probably start in june based on market pricing basically unchanged from where we were a week ago if anything maybe the inflation story got a little bit better slightly with some of the labor data today that's what economists were saying so overall the risk that we were talking about, Josh, we were talking about this yesterday. What, what are the risks? What's going to yeah. bring us down? Yeah. Nothing really came from a macro perspective for us this week. So I think that's CP, an what, CPI next week? CPI next yeah. week, right? So what happens on that print? I don't know. Maybe you know. I don't know. You know, another one I, I want to do, um, I, want, I don't know. I don't know what's coming. I want to get your take as two guys who kind of read through a lot of research notes now, because I think some of the commentary on valuation is also really interesting, in that you see really well-respected strategists making the argument that, well, you know, you can't compare this market to past markets. Yeah. It's a different economy. It's different companies. We've gone from industrial to digital. 
and I'm wondering what you make of that, Miles. Do you, because I could see how some people maybe that gets them a little nervous, like that sounds like someone trying to justify things getting stretched. Or no, do you, do you buy it? Well, no one wants to hear this time is different. No one yeah. wants to hear about mm -hmm. how you know these mm -hmm. uh, timeless rules of investing, like you know yeah. your your PE ratios, uh, don't apply. I think the margin profile of current companies. Josh flagged a note earlier today about City looking at free cash flow on an index level basis. Mm -hmm. So you're finding all these other ways to slice that you know loaf of bread or whatever you want to call it on valuations. But I think there's been a little bit like doth protesteth too much around the notion of mm -hmm. this is not 1999. Mm. And I'm not, you know, look, I'm no bear, but I'm just, there's just a lot of people saying 1999 a lot of the time. Yeah. And you know they're responding to clients, but do we need to talk about it? I mean, all, that much? Yeah, come on. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah, well, it was interesting to hear Jordan Klein Mizuho just a little while ago. We were talking to him about tech. And, it, you know, he just got, was like, it just feels like we should be worried, right? It, uh, look, we would have sat here four years ago and been like, Remember, semiconductors are a cyclical trade. And now, apparently, it's fine that NVIDIA goes up every day. Well, there so. are still some people who say they're still cyclical, uh, and we're, I, we're ignoring that at our peril. But I think then, you know, I don't know. other people said that. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, you know, we're just reporting. So, anyway. <laughs> Thanks for being there, guys. Fun to talk to both of you, Miles and Josh.